What's up, people? I am back for another video. Sorry I didn't do a video on the weekend. It was just, just kind of felt like I'm taking it off. But uh, today, I am going to do the video I was supposed to do on Thursday. We're doing Conjuring 3. And I'm going to try to make sure for sure this Thursday I'm going to do The Nun 2. Or The Nun, sorry. I'm going to do Nun 2 next week. But yeah. So today, I am reviewing Conjuring 3. But I guess before I go into that, I kind of want to get into what I got going on this week. So tomorrow, I am going to be doing, since it's Halloween, um, I'm going to list my favorite Michael Myers actors. Because I figure, you know, it makes sense to try to do a Halloween franchise-related video. And I already talked about, like, the news. I was going to do a video on that again. But, eh. So, I'll just, especially how long it's been since that news has been announced. So I'll just do that. Wednesday, we'll do Maniac Cop 2. Thursday, we're going to do The Nun. And I have a feeling it's going to be a rant just from what I'm hearing from a lot of people. That The Nun was pretty much a disappointment. And, yeah, that's, that's a, what I'm hearing a lot. So, And then I'll be doing Friday. I was going to do X, X-Men um, Origins. I'm going to do that next week because I think I may have found the most blatant Jaws ripoff. Like, it is to the point where the, not just, they straight up steal like Spiel, uh, not Spielberg, uh, the John Williams music. Like, not just Jaws. Like, there's a scene they play the Jaws music where you hear like the start of it. You also hear the Star Wars music. And it's so blatant. It's called Cruel Jaws. <laughs> I'm not kidding you with that name. It is called Cruel Jaws. And I figure, I want to roast this piece of shit. I saw someone, um, I'm trying to remember the, I can't remember the channel's name at the moment, but he reacted to um, the movie, and my God, it just, from the condensed version I watched, it is bad. So I can only imagine watching it the whole way through. So I figure, why not roast that? I haven't done like a, a fun roast of a movie like that in a while, so I'll do that on Friday. So, so that's my schedule. At least until Friday. I'll figure out what we'll do. On, I'll probably do that Screen Rant article for sure. I'll try to do that Saturday. And then I think this is going to be another week where there's really nothing, like no new movies coming out. Like I'm probably not going to go to the theater until like maybe two weeks from now when um that Thanksgiving movie comes out. Because, yeah, there's really nothing out right now. Like... And next week's, I'm not watching the Marvels. I don't fucking give a shit. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, probably not until, like, Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving movie. I am probably not going to be seeing anything in theaters. So, anyway. Conjuring 3. I This one is definitely the weakest of the main three. I don't think it's a bad movie, necessarily. I still think... Ed and Lorraine Warren were great. I think that the chemistry throughout all three films is great. That's one of the things I do like. And it continues the trend of... One of these things these movies always have is a great opener. And I thought this had a pretty good opener with the David... I uh, can't think of the kid's last name, but his his exorcism. And then it goes... In, and then the problem is, for me, the movie really falls apart where it's about trying to save Arn from prison. So they have to, like, prove he was possessed. It, I didn't... I'm going to be honest, I didn't really care for that element of the movie. I, I really don't think I needed that. I would have rather it had been like the second one, where it was just another case where they have to look into like crazy paranormal shit. I would have rather them just did that. I didn't need this whole thing to try to... It, it just, to me, it dragged the movie down a little bit. I just didn't care. Um, and there's nothing wrong. There's just no disrespect to Arn, but it just... I didn't need that one. I understand it was based off a real thing. But, I don't know. They could have found another case. Like, even the, day, the the case in the beginning, you could have made a whole movie on that alone. I would have rather that have even been the movie. I don't know. I just didn't really care for this plot line. So, and didn't really care for any of the characters. Like, his girlfriend, he has to be... Eh, I was just not into it. Some of the scare moments were still pretty good. But it just didn't do it for me. So, overall, I would give it a 7. It's still a well-made movie, and it's not bad. And I think you can watch Conjuring 1 through 3 as a, as a decent trilogy, though the first two movies are way better. But it, it de 
definitely is the weakest of the three. It's not even close. It's not a bad movie. I won't say it's like bad or anything, but it's definitely not great. I just didn't care for this. They have to save Arn from prison. Though he ends up going to man, he gets charged with manslaughter. Apparently, they. But I don't know. I just didn't need this element in the movie. I would have this could have been a case you could have talked about later, even within the other. I would have rather them thought the more interesting case. They did a lot of cases. You could have just found something way more interesting to talk about than this one. I just, I, it just wasn't there for me. It, it really wasn't. I just didn't care. I, to be honest, I, I did not fucking care. So it's not a bad movie, but just that element of it just kind of, it still had the, the scares were still relatively well done, and I do think there were still some solid like score moments it's decent horror i just didn't think it's as good as the other two so like i said i'm gonna stick with like a seven um part of me if i'm being more objective probably could push to a six and a half but i'll I'll stick with a seven but i I would recommend i think you can watch one through three as a trilogy and be fine we'll see how the nun goes and apparently annabelle one anyway apparently the second one isn't as bad but the annabelle one isn't even great so it's like fuck and none too. I'm hearing very is very divisive. I've heard is not as bad as first, but it's still not really good. So it's like, ah, uh, shit. So, um, we'll see. I'm gonna review that on Thursday. But tomorrow, like I said, I'm gonna be listing my favorite Michael Myers actors. That's gonna be fun. Cause you know, I think the the worst actor for me for Michael Myers. Um, I have to look into his name eventually, but. The one from H two O. I might just. I may not. Um, I was gonna say something else, but never mind. I'm gonna. Yeah, he's easily Chris Durant. Now I remember his name. Michael. He's a uh, Michael from Halloween H. He's easily the worst. I, I can already tell you, he'll be the worst. I think he was not it. The way he apparently never even seen the movies and the way he played it just. So I don't want to go too into that. I'll save that for tomorrow. But it's just, yeah. So that'll be fun to talk about since, you know, it's Halloween. So I figure why not try to do something Halloween related. But anyway. Um, Here's a little thing they call him during three. So the movie starts, they go they talking about the exorcism of David. <coughs> that was a cool opening scene, I'll admit. That was a cool opener. The effect when he's getting kind of possessed and then his brother Arn tries to say, I'll give myself up if you just get out of David. <coughs> <coughs> he doesn't while this happens. And yeah, I do admit there were some creepy moments when the scene was happening, so <laughs> I still think this movie could change the trend of a cool opening scene sequence with this franchise. So then it goes in R, the demon, and then it, everything seems fine. And then a couple weeks later, Arn ends up killing his friend because, you know, he's possessed and he's seeing things. And yeah, he ends up killing his friend by stabbing him exactly 22 times. And, you know, obviously he's going to, looks like he's going to get the death penalty because it looks like he did it, but, you know, his girlfriend doesn't leave him. Then this is where the Warrens get involved. And another element of the film I really didn't care for, yeah, they try to do the whole fake out with Ed and Lorraine's, well, Ed's death specifically. What it, you didn't really need to do that either. It's like, we know he's not going to die. We know when he actually dies. So you don't, it's fine when they did it in the second one. Because you're still trying to build tension, and obviously it's Hollywood. They could tweak it if they really wanted to. But it's like, okay, but you didn't need to do it in this one. Because at no point did I really feel like he was going to die. I'm like, no. I, you know, I didn't really feel any peril for his character. At least in the second one, 
you can it made you feel like he there's a chance obviously you still knew he wasn't gonna die but it's like they still like at least made you somewhat believe there is a chance even if you just get, make it a smidgen believe there's a chance it, you can make it's that's well that's when it's well written but when you just know he's not gonna die I mean this one I just knew he wasn't so it was just like just don't do it so but so they end up taking the case and they basically have to try to prove his innocent in, 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 blah, arms and in, innocence. They go to the, um, I'm kind of assuming the judge, and ba- or like one of the, I think she's the attorney actually, and she basically has to bring up the case, and she doesn't believe him, and basically they have to pr- convince her and everybody else that he was possessed, because then he ends up escalating to the death penalty, and then one of the, they find out that there's this totem that was used to basically convinced that he was possessed because earlier on when they had him read the bible everything seemed fine they didn't believe he was possessed at first but it turns out this thing is able to like i guess manifest a demon at that point and then it goes away that was kind of cool but i would have liked a little bit more um exploration with that because i actually thought it was a cool concept and i just didn't really feel like they they should have explored that more I would have rather the film have leaned into that shit instead of like this whole they have to try to pr- prove art is innocence. I didn't really need that element in the movie. To be honest, I, I thought that was a little bit. I understand that was an actual case. I get it. But that's one of those ones I, I probably wouldn't have adapted that case. I would have did another one. But so they find out that there was another girl who was killed the exact same way and apparently there's a satanic cult which that's the other problem I have with the movie they don't really explain the satanic cult much they're just kind of there um because there's even a scene where it possesses Ed later on and you kind of get a little bit of it I, I think that was the other, sorry that was the other problem I had with this movie there wasn't as much lore like the I felt like one and two real especially two really built on the lore of this franchise even though, yeah, I get it, they're real people. They still manage to build lore around it. I didn't really feel that in this one, really. I just, they're like, oh, there's this cult. And that's all really it is. Um, I do think there were still some good scares. The scene where Ed gets possessed and he almost kills Lorraine was pretty sad. Like, he almost, oh, shit, okay. Thought that was kind of a good scene. Like, I think there's moments in this one. It's just, it's not as strong um, in terms of the plot, like I'm sorry, I'm just not as invested. That's why you notice I'm just not as going into it really. So basically, they manage to defeat the demon, whatever. Um, and um, basically, Arn gets ends up going to prison. I do like the stuff with Lorraine where she can go into other, like, memory, not memories, but, like, um, that scene where she managed to stop the lady. Because there's a scene where um, Arn almost kills himself. He almost cuts himself, you know, fatally. And um, she manages to stop it, which, that was a cool scene. Like, some of that shit was cool, but I just think there just there wasn't as much lore building around and that's a little disappointing so Ed and Lorraine basically get a new house Arn and um ends up going to jail for manslaughter but ends up getting married to um I don't know, I'm gonna be honest I don't really remember the girlfriend's name she was she was an okay character but she just wasn't memorable I think this whole plot wasn't that memorable to me, to be honest. Um, I will still watch it again, like, but I would probably only watch it again in the context if I was watching one, two, and three back to back. But yeah, I probably if I were to watch any of them, I'd watch Conjuring one even on its own. I think it's still a good one. Same with Conjuring two. I just think this one, in that sense, I don't think it's that good. It doesn't have that rewatchability factor where if I were, I would just watch it straight up by itself. I'd almost only watch it if I was watching it with the other two. But I still think it's an okay watch. I just don't think it's, I'm going to rush to watch this one on its own, just by itself. 
So out of, in that sense, yeah, it's probably more like a six out of ten. But I'll give it a seven. I, I had it was fine. I think Ed and Lorraine Warren still put on a great performance, especially Patrick Wilson. I think he always kills it in these movies. I think there were some decent scares. It's just not a strong story. More my problem with it, if anything. So, um, but I would recommend. I think you can watch one, two, and three back to back and be good on a franchise. You know. Like, you can watch these movies way out one, two, and three and be fine. Yeah, I don't know if I, I would say watch it, like, um, by itself. Because I don't think the story is that compelling. Like, I would probably, if I were to compare this to, like, Insidious Red Door, which to me is really Insidious 3. That one, Insidious Red Door is still a better movie, even though that one is the, probably the weakest of that trilogy. I would still say it's definitely better than this movie. I just think there was still more in that Apple, whereas this one, I think there was a little bit lacking, but it's still a decent enough film. So, so I would still give it like a seven, just uh, not uber strong. Um, tomorrow, like I said, Halloween. Um, let's see my favorite Michael Myers actors for Halloween. That'd be fun. Um, but yeah. <coughs> All right, y'all. <coughs> I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.